Alright, then, uh, brothers and sisters, I don't know who watching or who ever watched the videos, but, um, just go on a, a swim with me in a thought bubble right quick. Um, there's gonna be a couple more parts to this. I don't know what to name it, but, um, just, alright. So, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, this is a reef school. I didn't know there was a, a the ocean barriers, but um, so I'm going. I'm looking for reefer. What is the Spanish word for reefer? Right. I mean, excuse me. Where did the term reefer come from? That's what I typed in a search engine. Where did the term reefer come from? And the answer, the best answer I got is reefer is Spanish for loan word. Spanish loan word. Reef is a Spanish loan word. Possibly from Mexican Spanish. And this is a Mexican Spanish. Mexica Spanish. Grifa for marijuana. Or grifa, grifa, grifo. Meaning marijuana user. Apparently the same word. Grifo as meaning curly hair. So... Here's another one. So if you watching this, hopefully, uh, if you're still along, riding along, swimming along with me, marijuana, cigarette, perhaps an alteration of Mexican spent, uh, Mex e can, mesh e can, I don't know, uh, for marijuana, grifo for drug addict, uh, perhaps from reef. On a resemblance to a road sail. So, hopefully, you still riding along with me. And I went to the online etymology dictionary. And it's marijuana cigarette, you know, 1920s, perhaps an alteration of Mexican Spanish grifo, marijuana drug addict. Okay, so we already know it's a Mexican word. We're not going to even uh, play that. Or perhaps from reef on a resemblance to a road sail. Um, by the time I get through with this, I'm going to look up what a road sail is. It also meant pickpocket in criminal slang. Okay. So a reef or a reef as a pickpocket? I don't get that. 1935 reef. Oh, they, uh, they made it illegal. They made reef illegal around that time in the United, uh, the United States. Cause it's, and they made it legal other terms like saying uh, it made Negroes want to uh, sleep with white women and white women want to sleep with Negroes or something like that. But hopefully you, you listen to what I'm, uh, this, this, this wave I'm going on basically was named for sailing the sailing Navy's equivalent to a midshipman 1818 because they attend and stop during the operation of reefing which is a source of the meaning coat of a nautical cut worn by sailors and fishermen, but copied for general use and fashions of 1888 through the 90s. So, okay, maybe this is around the time the Navy started using this term and the clothing, wearing the clothing, because if you go on a trip with me, you listen and you understand why, what perspective I'm coming from. Let's go. So uh, I, I I killed that. I'm get that out the way. I'm get that out the way. All right, I had to I'm gonna get that out the way. Okay, I'm gonna just keep going. So uh, this is I I was looking for the Egyptian reef. No, excuse me. What was I looking for? Oh, Egyptian reef. Uh, and I also look for an American reef, but uh, Exodus. I'm going. Uh, this is why I I look for this because I'm about to read on the Sabbath day the book, the beginning of the book of Exodus. Uh, all right. So let me knock this out of the way. All right. So I'm going to read this. The Red Sea. The Red Sea. Why? I think something has to do with the Bering Strait. Uh, but I'm going to read this. Hopefully, if you're sticking along with me. 
Uh, so I'm looking for the Sudanese people because it said that they were um, the original Egyptians. And when I look on the Egyptian wall, I see the same people, but I also see a resemblance to the Negro in America. So I don't know. I, I ain't look at these. Oh, I see my girl Lupita. So I, this will happen to be the Nubian people. I don't. Well, actually, they're called something else. But if you know, if you see that, well, it's a thought. It's a thought you're riding along with me. If you've seen Egyptian Stella and never been through the whole Egyptian, uh, or look at the information or whatever that the Egyptian provide. So, uh, Sudanese people, all right? Uh, the people of Sudan. I'm going to look up that term also and see what it means. Um, okay, so let me get this out of the way. So, I didn't know that Sudan had pyramids. I didn't know that. But, thinking how much of uh, Egypt was a world power at its time, you should know that being world powers, if you are not bound to a base people, you lose the um, territory that you were once in. You lose the territory you were once in. Uh, or surrounding areas. You lose the surrounding like, uh, fat, cut and trim fat off the chicken, if you get what I'm saying, or off the beef, if you get what I'm saying. Or you... you um, your borders, you lose your borders. But I uh, hope you're riding along with me, man. I'm just, you know, this ain't in vain. So I'm looking for, I see this, and um, this is this is a Sudanese boy, and Nilotic people. Okay, Sudanese and Nilotic. And the reason why I'm bringing this up because if we went back to Egypt as a people power is as if saying uh, I, I can't explain it but hopefully he's still riding along with me so these are these are not um, these are not um, African Americans okay these are not present day African Americans. These are these um, Nilotic and whatever the boy called. Uh, I believe Afar. I'm going to tell you why because I believe the Sudanese have different people groups in them. That's what people don't get. They don't fathom, man. They don't get it. It's crazy. You don't think. And these are. Um, Sudan, Afar people who are in Sudan. So some say that these people right here are the, the descendants of the Egyptian pharaohs. All right, Egyptian pharaohs. And you can't sit here and say that he is not people in America that don't look like these people. You can't sit here and say that it's not people with this hair texture and type. Because I'm not going to sit here and fly like I don't. I have this, and many Mexicans have this, and Afro Mexicans, not just meth, not not just the light, the dark skinned Mexicans, light skinned Mexicans too. So I'm sitting that down right now, saying that uh, these people, that the Mexicans, the Latinos, the Hispanics, Puerto Ricans, all the light skinners, how on the island of Santo Domingo or Puerto Rico, uh, one of the two, that's a couple with Haiti. I'm not gonna sit here and say that those are not the same people. But one side of the island got uh, ravaged, and the other side didn't really get, uh, you know what I'm saying? And then a separation of black and, the whole black and white thing became, of splitting the slave, Jim Crow laws. Jim Crow laws, I believe, are Egyptian laws. Because Crow was black, and I'm going to break that word down uh, on some other time. But, um... I, I'm not going to sit here and say there's not people with this hair and I got hair texture just like this. But then again, you know what I come to find out? These people have Afro hair too. You feel what I'm saying? Because look at this dude. He's doing his hair like that. But at the same time, 
uh, I don't think he's really, I don't know if he's doing his hair like that, but my hair get like that when it get wet. So I'm not going to flog and say I ain't got hair like that. That's basically the point I'm getting to. Hope he's still riding along with me. I'm riding along with the set. Um, but, uh, okay, I'm going to get rid of this one because I was going to bring something out. But hopefully he's still riding along. So these are still a far people. Hold on. So this is a far dude. That's why I say they're doing their hair like this. This is why I think that we took, that when we went back to Egypt, meaning that he was saying we started the customs of Egypt again. That's what I'm saying. Worshiping their gods. Not saying they didn't come out of Egypt with great substance. Different Throughout different captivities, I would have to say that not only did we take on the people that we've been, because you know that uh, Daniel, we, we we somewhat subjected ourselves to different powers and nations. Or you can say modern today we have um, how you send, how Chinese send, you got Chinese Americans and this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? So Egypt was the light of the world at the time and had, um, that's like saying uh, we have neighboring nations that come inside of the USA to get education. Uh, resources to send back home. We got foreigners, foreign policies. Damn it, that's what I'm saying. We got foreign policies. We can't sit here and say the people of the Bible didn't have foreign policy. We, there's laws, statutes, and, and commandments and customs. The commandments are what the people should do inside the nations. The customs, uh, the customs of the people, and whether or not if you were abroad or far, you kept the customs and traditions and clothing. Uh, but this is. Uh, I, f I think this is an indigenous people to Asia, uh, they, but they're far. You can't sit here and say this ain't what uh, Aaron or Moses would look like. Because when I see that movie, the, uh, the Prince of Egypt, hey, boy, they did a little resemblance now. You know, that's just what they portrayed, but you can't sit here and fly. I don't know who wrote it and put it out, but boy, if the crackers let it loose, I, I don't know, man. You know, just a thought on that. But uh, hopefully you're still riding along with me. This is the original Betty Boop, which is a woman that is black. A black woman, a Negro. And we ain't going to sit here and say that the Aboriginal people, um, you can't sit here and say the light-skinned Aboriginal people wasn't uh, the house slaves. Those were the house slaves. They were still niggas. I don't sit here and fly to say they wasn't. And don't sit here and flodge. If the white man was really fucking niggas, you can't sit here and say niggas weren't really fucking white women. You can't say that. You can't say they didn't want that dick. And that they like the... Uh, let's not even sit here and flodge. The Aboriginal people and the Negroes of today, the African American of today are the same. Light skin or whatever. Now I took you through uh, um, uh, the dark skin... The dark-skinned people, what they actually, the dark-skinned Aboriginal Indians, they bred with the white women and the white men, and you know, they they mixed themselves, uh, they mingled themselves amongst the people, right? And what they did was they started giving their inheritance and riches. Okay, it's like this: the Native America had hierarchy. The Aboriginals had hierarchies also, as ruling nations and powers and tribes and clans, hierarchies. Don't think they didn't have government officials, and a lot of this stuff come from us. Is what we don't fathom. Everything is about us. It's always been about us. Everything, from movies to cartoons, everything has been about us. You don't get it, man. We look a speckled bird. I'm I'm telling you, this is not a lie, but. Uh, hopefully you're still riding along when I'm trying not to make it too long, man, because people attention span be dipping. And uh, hopefully in the future, or whatever, or for people that get on my way frequency, as we see, this is a blue, black woman in India, and I have already said that the India has something to deal, with. and you gonna see why. Damn, did I keep it up? I think so. I'm okay. I'm riding that. I'm reading at the end. Excuse me. It's at the end. Hopefully you're still riding along. Still, please pay attention. So, we look like many of the different people and nations. All right. So, this is some more Afar people, the real Egyptians, Afar people. 
They in Ethiopia, Sudan, different places. That they are a base kingdom now. Do you see what I'm saying? A base kingdom. Look at okay. Look at these people, man. Okay, we see resemblances. This lady is the same lady that had the cone on the back of her head or whatever. So that nation still is the same. So these are the people of Narma or whatever. Those descendants are still on that side of the world. Okay, look, they still keep the customs. The people on the wall are still the same. Look at this. These are still these are the same people. All right. You see, we got the Asians or whatever, and I don't know why they put the Native Americans there, but uh, my stepson look like this G, and I'm going to go ahead and put a resemblance up, and put mine up, and I'm going to put my history, my family history from what I gathered, linking it back to the, uh, what I remember for my family and my bloodline. So, uh, okay, so you, you see this. Uh, I don't, this ain't no receiving hand. What the fuck is this? These brothers, that's not a receding headline because I don't think they forehead is that short. Um, I, I don't know. But uh, all right. So these are the main Beitu people over here in the corner cut in the cut over here with the elongated heads. And we can't sit here and say that from the Mississippi down to the uh, to Central America, through all Central America, they carried this custom. From the Mississippi, from recorded history, a lot of this is from recorded history that we have been able to keep. All right, but we can't say the road to El Dorado that in, in Puerto Rico was not the temple goal. Okay, we don't know if that island was used as a vault for us or anything. We didn't. We have to fathom ourselves as a nation. This 500 nations shit you hear about, and you gonna act like these was all just planes, Indians, and man, we had officers. I'm telling you, and from what I've been able to run into, the officers wore swastikas and six pointed stars. We don't know if that's the sheriff, and uh, we don't know a uh, state trooper or border patrol. We don't know, man. We have to fathom this, though. But uh, hopefully, you're still right. Sorry about the, uh, the woman up there, but hopefully, it keep your attention, uh, men, if you're watching, for watching this video. I'm not selling sex, but uh, okay. So Ethiopian women. So there's still people in Ethiopia that claim to be the lost tribes of Israel. Okay, I'm done with this. We. That's why I was telling uh, somebody in the comment. That uh, I'm not saying I'm saying not all Ethiopians are so-called Jews or Israelites, Jews or Israelites. I'm not putting them together right now. Even though we were pressed together, we can't sit here and say that the slave trade. Well, I'm gonna tell you a thought I have. I believe the slave trade also carried away light-skinned Israelites. From, excuse me. I believe that the transatlantic slave trade was a trade in between bringing people from this Africa as slaves, uh, um, excuse me, from this, um, excuse me, what was I thinking? From this continent, this side of the continent, to that continent, and from that side of the continent to this continent. Great switcheroos. Great switcheroos. Okay, so, all right. So, this is basically images on the wall. So, you know that the images that I showed, uh, these are actually the people and not some white people. You know what I'm saying? Or even the people that are ruling it today. I believe those may be Egyptians that have uh, been conquered. Their genetics are not... Basically, uh, when you conquer another people... The people start looking like you a little bit. If you know what I mean. If you don't get completely slaughtered off. Even if you try not to interbreed and mix. Ain't no way in hell you not going to. You know what I'm saying? 
because we are not the animal kingdom. We are the men kingdom. I'm mean, excuse me. We are the human. Uh, whatever type of species we are, we are that kingdom. We're not plants, basically what I'm saying. But all I know is whenever something borders each other, there is a mixture in between. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the reason why I bought this up. I mean, that's the reason why it showed up. I didn't bring it up. Um, but whenever there's border, because these are two different oceans, if you know whether or not. Two different oceans. But yet we have three different there's a mixture in between. There's a board to. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and run back to what I was going to. My thought bubble, if you're still riding the wave with me. So I'm just looking at the walls, letting you know that these people are still over there. These are the people that are still over there. So. All right. Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, yeah, is that why, uh, the cottonmouth rattlesnake, the desert? I oh, don't know, but, uh, hopefully you're still riding along with me. It's 20 minutes, 21 minutes in, and if you ain't, somebody is. But I'm going to go out. So I looked up the Red Sea. This article is about the body water between Arabia and Africa for other uses. See Red Sea. This kind of big U.S. So I don't know what that is. Maybe. Uh, on this page, the Red Sea, also the Eritrean Sea, I believe that was by the Greeks. Because as we know, as this different world powers take hold and take places, they uh, they go afar and take over different lands that's not even close to them or by them, if they're world powers. We got to fathom this whole everything we see, man. We got to fathom diff different nations being able to... If, if there's still nations, there are people that are living today. Okay, recorded in this world. All right, so let's go. Because I'm pretty sure that different cultures... Oh, hold on, I'll be back. Whew. I'm going to go ahead and continue. Um, uh, the Red Sea also Eritrean or Eritrean sea is a seawater inlet of the Indian Ocean lying between Africa and Asia. So between Africa and Asia is the Red Sea. And the reason why I looked this up because I was looking up reef. Um, and I showed you the meaning of reefer. Um, it was curly hair. Uh, and which was the marijuana. So, this part is going to be uh, another part of this video because uh, I'm pretty sure people, well, I'm going to keep going. I mean, I watch videos all the time. It's two and three hours long, and uh, I, I watch them. Or I pause them and come back to them to watch them because um, I thirst for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Um, but let me continue. I am to, the connection to the ocean is through it is in the south through Babal Mandel. Mandel. So uh if you watch you know and check my white channels or watch it, you can subscribe to uh, you can see where I'm coming from. Babel oh shit. Babel Mandab straight and the Gulf of Aden. The Gulf of Aden. Okay, to the north lie the Sinai Peninsula, the Gulf of Aqaba, and the Gulf of Suez, leading to the Suez Canal. I don't know if that's Spanish. I don't know the original names or the names. So, no, one thing that I know is um. I'm pretty sure the Aboriginal people of this continent had names that weren't retained today by the people who conquered. So I'm guessing the people in the landmass, because ain't no telling how far back. And as we know, uh, water rises, land 
appears and disappears all the time. So where it says that um, man was never not, I don't, you know. But let's keep going. Um, the Suez Canal. The Red Sea is a global 200 acre region, a core region. I don't know what that means. The sea is underlain by the Red Sea Rift, which is part of the Great Rift Valley. The Red Sea has a surface area of roughly uh, 438,000 kilometers. I don't know what the power is, times two, I'm guessing, or that's a square foot. Um, so you see the numbers. I'm just going to say you see the numbers so we don't waste time. It's about 2250 kilometers, 1398 miles long, and its widest point, 355 kilometers. 220.6. This is not my field. I uh, growing up, you know, I only got I know how to read rulers and other such things. Maybe this is something I need to put down because I got a how to uh, geometry for dummies. I got a bunch. I got a little library. I'm bringing it back out because um, I made a couple videos about my library, but I didn't upload it. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead. Maximum depth. Da da da. I'm going to go ahead and cut through all this. You see this, man. You can go ahead. I'm not putting the links up because uh, I might put this link up. But you see the things that I put up there. Extent the inter... And please, man, don't... Dissect videos that you watch that you think are full of information. Meals, as you will say. If you see a meal, the, the uh, you know, uh, everything summed up is like a... This is not a tester, should I say this? I'm going to go ahead and say that. This is not a tester. This is a meal. You eat something, you don't like it. You go ahead and exit out the video about the two-minute mark. But let me go ahead. If you even got this far to listen to this. But uh, if you listen to... I don't even want to say a follow. But if you follow my thought... If you're a follower of my uh, thought... Because I was correlate... Uh, this trip, man. Let me keep going. I ain't finna talk. Um... All right, let me skip through some of that. All right, Red Sea is a direct translation of the Greek Eritrea, Thalassa, and Latin Mount Rurum. Alternatively, Sinus Arabicus, meaning Arabian Gulf. <coughs> so now that the Arabs have gotten the Gulf, it is now the Arabian Gulf. Instead of, it used to be called Erythra or the Red Sea. You see what I'm saying? You see how names get changed according to who has it at the time? Or the people? Somali Badakas and Tegiringa. The name, you see the different names of the different regions? Do you see what I'm saying? And I'm coming out with a video on the Hebrew names of God because some people say, I'm just going to and continue. The name of the sea may signify the seasonal blooms of the red color whatever near the water surface a theory favored by some modern scholars is the name red referring to the direction south just as black sea's name may refer to north the basis of this theory is that some asiatic languages use color words to refer to car all right let me this video wasn't meant for this but uh the association of red sea with the biblical count of the israelites crossing the red sea is ancient and was made explicit in the Septuagint. So we know the story of the Egyptians. They left their land, it was famine, and they went into a land. Okay? They went into a land. Does that mean that the... Does that mean that uh, there the weren't people left behind? You see what I'm saying? Just like China likes American education and certain things and and at one point of the Bible, certain people groups from the same nation of people were sent to scout out a land. We don't know if that's uh, about 10,000 people. You know what I'm saying? Because Asia's numbering millions and billions or whatever. And um, they have about a couple hundred thousand, maybe a million over here. Maybe about 350, 100,000 over here. But I'm going to go ahead and pause right quick and continue reading this and spin that phone. All right. So I'm back. Let me finish this. Um, where the hell was I? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. What's up here? Red Sea is direction of uh, Erythra, Thalassa, Latin Mare. Oh, I finished this. Uh, a favor by modern scholars is that the, na the name Red is referring to direction south, just as the Black Sea's name may refer to north. The basis of this theory is that some Asiatic languages used colors, words to refer to the cardinal directions. And, uh, Go back here right quick. I'm going to type in some This is, but I'll get to it in a bit. For my side study, hopefully, still holding on with this video. He's still sticking around. I'm trying to get to a point. Um, the window is busy. Mexico. All right, uh, I don't know where it's at, man. Well, what I was showing was uh, uh basically. on one occasion uses red sea and southern sea interchangeably. Both corners of the world, let's see. Historically, it was also known to Western geogra geographers as Mare Mecca, Sea of Mecca. Oh, so Marie Mecca. So, maybe Tal Marie is land on the sea, I don't know. And Sinus Arabicus, Gulf of Arabia, some ancient geographers call the Red Sea, the Arabian Gulf, or Gulf of Arabia. The association of the Red Sea with the biblical accounts of Israelites crossing the Red Sea is ancient and was made explicit in the Septuagint translation of the book of Exodus from Hebrew to Kohen, Kohen, or maybe Kohen, I don't know, Kohan. And approximately the third century BC, in that version of Hebrew, Yom Suf, is translated. That was a, a, a certain, I believe, Canaanite god named Yom, who was a river. Translated as Erythria, the Lassa, Red Sea. See also the more recent suggestion that the Yom Suf of the Exodus refers to as Sea of Reeds. The Red Sea is one of four seas named in English after common color terms. The others being the Black Sea, the White Sea, the Yellow Sea, 
and okay, the red seed, black, white, yellow, uh, red. Um, wait, oh, hold. Direct rendition of the Greek Aretha, the Lassa in Latin as Murray Erythraeum refers to the northwestern part of the Indian Ocean and also to a region on Mar a regional Mars. All right. The earliest known exploration of the Red Sea was conducted by ancient Egyptians as they attempted to establish commercial routes to hunt commercial routes. One such expedition took place around 2500 BC and another circa 1500 BC by Hatshepsut. Both involved long voyages down the Red Sea. Historically, scholars argue whether these trips were possible. The biblical book of Exodus tells a tale of the Israelites crossing a body of water, which is the Hebrew text called Yom Suf. Yeah, so there was a Canaanite deity named Yama, which was a river, which was a deity. Uh, Yam Suf was traditionally identified as the Red Sea. Rabbi Saadia Gayam, 1882 through, 18, through 942 CE. So a rabbi had to figure out whether that was the Red Sea or not? I don't know. In his Judeo-Arabic translation of the Pentateuch, identifies the crossing place of the Red Sea as Bahar al khazum meaning the Gulf of Suez. The story is part of the larger biblical lore about an exodus of Israelites under Moses. Yom Suf can also have been translated as Sea of Reeds. All right. Um, in the 6th century BC, Darius the Greater Persia sent reconnaissance missions to the Red Sea, improving and extending navigation by locating many hazardous rocks and currents. A canal was built between the Nile and the northern end of the Red Sea at Suez. So we know a lot of canals, uh, now you see with a root canal and all that, but a lot of canals were uh, a lot of things are man-made rivers and lakes. Um, so you can see how everything broke apart, really, from a Pangea standpoint of view, I guess. In the late 4th century BC, Alexander the Great sent Greek naval expeditions down the Red Sea to the Indian Ocean. Greek navigators continued to explore and compile data on the Red Sea. Agathos Kais collected information about the sea in the 2nd century BC. The Periplus of the Erythraean Sea. Greek Periplus, written by an unknown author around 1st century AD, contains a detailed description of the Red Sea's ports and sea routes. Uh, Periplus also describes how Hippolus first discovered the direct route from the Red Sea to India. The Red Sea was favored for Roman trade with India starting with the, re the reign of Augustus. When the Roman Empire gained control over uh, over the Mediterranean, Egypt, and Northern Sea, the rope had been used by previous states but grew in the volume of traffic under the Romans. All right. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm put this link out there. Over the rainfall over the Red Sea and its coast is extremely. Yeah, but uh, to read this whole thing, it was said that um, somehow thing make some flooding things if you stayed this long with me. But uh, yeah, put this link up. But all right.